welcome back to my channel. I am on a roll tonight with my filming. Yeah. My name is Holly, but you guys know me as Del Sorbda, which means I can't sleep in Korean. I am pasty today. Like my shirt is like white, but my skin is also white. <laughs> Alright, um, so I didn't get to watch this live, if you haven't seen the title below, which, I mean, that's why you clicked on the video, I'm assuming, so, I mean, it's not just to see this. Um, I'm going to be reacting to the UNE speech for UNICEF that BTS just did, like, an hour ago. I didn't realise it was happening tonight, I've kind of lost track of my life right now, um, if that's not my life, just in general, I don't know what is. Um, so I didn't realize it was happening tonight until I had my, like, friends tell me on Twitter that it was happening. So I just decided, fuck it, I'm just gonna react to it anyway. Um, so I'm pretty sure from what I can see, there's only the one speech. So I'm assuming it's in English just because it's the UN and usually their speeches are in English and then they have the little translating things in the people's ears for all the different countries. I'm gonna stop talking. Um, it's a seven minute video I'd like to pause it a little bit I can see the boys sitting there looking all professional like which I respect is Bang PD there is that is that the marshmallow man Bang PD I say that with love anyway let's get started thank you Mississippi General you are the executive director and all the excellencies and distinguished guests from across the world Still, I never get past how good his English is. Like, it's still, to this day, blowns, might blown. I'm native English and I can't even speak. He speaks better than I do. My name is Kim Namjoon, also known as RM, the lead up to group BTS. It is an incredible honor to be invited to an occasion with such significance for today's young generation. Mm. Last November, BTS launched the Love Myself campaign with UNICEF, building on our belief that true love first begins with loving myself. We've been partnering with UNICEF's End Violence Program to protect children and young people all over the world from violence. And our fans have become a major part of this campaign with their action and with their enthusiasm. We truly have the best fans in the world. Stop. Oh, he opened, he opened his speech in such a non-June way. Like, whenever they accept an award, it's like the first thing he does is just yell out to us. Um, I, I was one of the ones that I did participate in this. I have participated in the Love Myself campaign. Um, I have bought products before to go towards the Love Myself campaign. So, <laughs> I'm really sad though because I bought the bracelet and like the first day I wore it, I went to Green Island with like a study tour that I was doing. And I lost it. It, it just, it fell off. I don't know where it is. I, it just, it's gone. I have to buy it again. And I'd like to begin by talking about myself. I'm listening. I was born in Ilsan, a city near Seoul, South Korea. It is a really beautiful place with a lake, hills, and even an annual flower festival. Mm. I spent a very happy childhood there, and I was just an ordinary boy. I used to look up at the night nice sky and wonder, and I used to dream the dreams of a boy. I used to imagine that I was a superhero who could save the world. And in an intro to one of our early albums, there's a line that says, mm -hmm. my heart stopped when I was maybe nine or 10. Looking back, I think that's when I began to worry about what other people thought of me and started seeing myself through mm. their eyes. I stopped looking up at the night skies, the stars, I stopped daydreaming. Instead, I just tried to jam myself into the malls that other people made. Mm. Soon, I began to shut out my own voice and started to listen to the voices of others. Oh, this, this speech is pulling at my heartstrings. He is, oh, he's just... Mm. No one called out my name and neither did I. My heart stopped and my eyes closed shut. So, like this, I, we, 
our last dreams. We became like ghosts. It's very profound. It's very RM. It's very BTS. But I had one century, and that was music. There was a small voice inside of me that said, wake up, man, and listen to yourself. <laughs> But it took me quite a long time to hear music calling my real name. Mm -hmm. Even after making the decision to join BTS, there were a lot of hurdles. Some people might not believe, but most people thought we were hopeless. And sometimes I just wanted to quit. Mm. I'm gonna be emotional. Mm. I spent so long in this makeup, I'm not gonna cry, Kim Nam Jun. But I think I was very lucky that I didn't give it all up. Mm. And I'm sure that I and we will keep stumbling and falling like this. Life. BTS has become artists performing in those huge stadiums and selling millions of albums right now, but I am still an ordinary. 24-year-old guy. I say this a lot. <laughs> There's still people. If there's anything that I've achieved, it was only possible that I have my other BTS members right by my side. And because <laughs> of the love and the support that our army fans all over the world made for us. And maybe I made a mistake yesterday. But yesterday's me is still me. Mm. Today, I am who I am with all of my faults and my mistakes. Tomorrow... You see the lady in the background just gone. Mmm! She's feeling that. I'm feeling that. Like, I don't know if you can see her. Don't like it. This is, I'm doing great screenshots. This lady here. I am who I am with all of my faults and my mistakes. Here. Yeah. Tomorrow, I might be a tiny bit wiser, mm. and that'll be me too. These thoughts and mistakes are what I am, making up the brightest stars in the constellation of my life. Ooh. I have come to love myself for who I am, for As who I was, should. and for who I hope to become. Oh. Now, if that isn't an inspirational quote right there. I'd like to say the one last thing. After releasing our Love Yourself albums and launching the Love Myself campaign, we started to hear remarkable stories from our fans all over the world, how our message helped them overcome their hardships in life and start loving themselves. Those stories constantly remind us of our responsibility. So, let's take mm. all one more step. We have learned to love ourselves. So now I urge you to speak yourself. I like to ask all of you, what is your name? What excites you and makes your heart beat? Tell me your story. I wanna hear your voice I want to want to hear your conviction. No matter who you are, where you're from, your skin color, your gender identity, just speak yourself. Find your name and find your voice by speaking yourself. I'm Kim Nam Jun and also RM of BTS. I'm an idol and I'm an artist from a small town in Korea. Like most people, mm. I've made many and plenty mistakes in my life. I have many faults and I have many more fears, but I'm going to embrace myself as hard as I can. And I'm starting to love myself gradually, just little by little. What is your name? Speak yourself. Thank you very much. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. All the members are so proud. Uh, Thank you very much. 
with so many young fans around the world. It was a pleasure having BTS with us, and I'm thankful that you used <laughs> your what just happened? creativity on the world. It was a pleasure having BTS with us, and I'm thankful that you used your platform and creativity to reach young audiences with positive messages about what it means mm. to be a young person in the world today. So proud of our boys. Uh, that was... Mm. I have a lot of emotions when it comes to BTS. So... The, the whole love yourself thing, the, the whole concept, all the albums, the messages, everything that BTS has done for these albums have, like I said, they've impacted a lot of people. They've, they've really made people's lives better. Um, not just because they're idols, but because they spread love, they spread acceptance, they encourage people to not be ashamed of who they are. Um, I myself have come a long, long way since discovering BTS and K-pop in general, and the idea that, you know, like you said, you make mistakes. Mistakes I made yesterday, they make me. Um, I know who I was yesterday, I know who I am today, and I hope to be someone better tomorrow. Um, but that is not to say that I don't like the me I am now. Um, I'm coming to terms with my love for myself. Most of my life I have hated myself. I've been... I've been a very troubled child my entire life. Um, I don't really remember a time where I was happy as a young person until very recently. I was very good at pretending um, and it came to a point when I was 11 years old when I was finally diagnosed with anxiety and um, a depressive disorder um, as well as a thyroid condition which exacerbated the other conditions that I had. Um, since then I have been medicated continuously. I have never not been medicated until a week and a half ago. Um, <laughs> I have spent the last 14 years of my life on medication and this this whole thing is not to say that people shouldn't be medicated or that they should. At the, the end of the day it's a personal choice. It depends on your condition and where you're at. Um, me and my fiance are hoping to try for kids next year and if I want to try for kids I need to not be medicated. So a week ago or a week and a half ago I accidentally forgot to take my pills. Um, I haven't had them for a week and a half. I didn't realize until a few days ago. Um, I'm in the process of discussing with my doctor staying off them because I would like to see this out. I would like to get to know myself and get how to help myself without being medicated. Um, it's been a very long road for me. I had many <laughs> misdiagnoses. I've been diagnosed with bipolar, borderline, um, clinical depression, manic depression, and at the end of the day a label is a label. Um, I now identify really as bipolar. Um, because I, I swing, swing so fast, <laughs> a lot of manic tendencies, um, my anxiety is mostly social, um, I get very uncomfortable around people that I don't know, strangers walking down the street thinking people are staring at me can cause me an entire panic attack, um, and, you know, being, having been depressed for so long, and dealing with this stuff for so long. There's been medications I've been on that have not made me very well. Um, I've been a self-harmer half of my life. <laughs> I was very good at hiding it, most people didn't know. Um, and four years ago I tried to end my life twice within a month. Um, obviously both were unsuccessful but they were quite a shock to my system and to this day I live with the scars on my arms to show what I did to myself. And 
the whole journey that I've been through, you know, like I'm not attributing this just to BTS, but I like after what he said, where the RM said about and the thing that in the speech that there's been a lot of people who have come forward and said that, you know, BTS has done a lot to help them. And I agree completely. The, the, especially the Love Myself campaign. Love Yourself campaign, sorry. That, this entire campaign has, like, since the first time it came out, it's been such an emotional roller coaster for me. Um, I know a lot of other people feel the same way about the whole thing. And the, the last track, Answer, has, it's such an anthem. <laughs> like, um, I, I would never say I don't know where I would be without BTS because I attribute a lot of my, my current status and health status to myself and my absolute stubbornness to let myself get to the place I was in four years ago. I attribute a lot to the support that I have from my family and my amazing fiance. Um, even two weeks ago we had a mat, I was not well at all and he's never once left me. He's always supported me 100%. He's my rock. Um, having said that, the knowledge that there is a group who is so outspoken about these kinds of things when they come from a country where it is very taboo to speak about these things is very encouraging. And I think that's part of the reason why they became my ultimate group. Like I started with the second generation groups. I started with, you know, Big Bang, Super Junior, Girls Generation, 21, Shiny, all those like kind of crossover to your new generation. So it's, it's, I feel like what they do is very genuine. Um, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I've been very emotional a lot of the times when reacting to these, their kind of, their songs, their music. Um, I don't like showing emotion in front of people, so a lot of the time if I'm laughing or giggling in a place where it probably doesn't seem like it's meant to be, it's probably because I'm trying not to cry. It's my, um, it's my crutch, it's how I deal with emotions. Um, I'm never one to tell someone not to cry, I just prefer not to do it in front of people. Um, I don't really know where I'm going with this. There is never any reason that you should feel ashamed of your past. I've, like I said, I've had a very big past with mental health. I've had a not so nice past with men. <laughs> um, I wrote a thing on Twitter the other day in response to the why I didn't report hashtag and having been in a two year abusive relationship, sexually abusive relationship and the other four times, separate times, different men, different times when I have been taken advantage of men. It, I'm not ashamed of what has happened to me because at the end of the day, the things that have happened to me, yes, they're shit. And I would never wish them on anybody, man, woman, any age, any gender identity, any sexuality, any race, religion, nothing. I would never wish what had happened to me on any person, the abuse wise or the mental health wise. I am one of the people that if anyone has any problems, I will race to you. I will do anything for you because I know what it feels like. I know it sucks. Um, and I hate for people to feel that way. Strangers, people I love, anything. Um, and because of that, I'm very outspoken in the sense that I'm not ashamed of the fact that I have tried to kill myself twice. I have self-harmed for most of, like, half of my life. I have been sexually assaulted numerous times. I, I'm not ashamed of those things because at the end of the day, those things happen to me and they've shaped the person I am today. I feel very empowered now. And a lot of the stuff that BTS stands for encourages me to be empowered. Um, I don't think anyone should feel like they can't be themselves and this whole campaign to me to protect youth to n not just youth in general I think but just protect people to be aware that you know these things still happen 
what we can do to support each other when these things happen. Um, I think it's a very important message and I'm so appreciative of the fact that BTS and their label is so outspoken with them and allows that to be a message that they encourage. Um, that took a turn. <laughs> um, I really appreciate the speech. I, I'm, I'm not upset that all of the members didn't get a chance to speak. I think, you know, it, it makes sense for our room to do the speech. I feel like the boys would have all sat down together with either their PR or um, Bang PD and drafted the speech in Korean and then it would have been written in English and in my head the words he said, although he did often speak as himself, I feel like a lot of the things he said came from the mentality of the rest of the boys and the rest of the company. Um, so I think it was very well done. Um, it was short, it was concise, it made an impact obviously, you could see people around getting really impressed with the stuff that was being said. Um, he's a very intelligent man, as are all of the boys. I love that. Um, if you guys enjoyed my reaction to that, I'm sorry if that got really heavy. Um, I'm probably going to put a trigger warning at the start of that because the last thing I want is to remind anyone of anything for their own stuff. Um, I love you guys. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done so already, if you enjoy my content. If you don't, I'm not going to hold it against you. Don't stress. Um, I love you guys. I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you guys in the next video.